available to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. Yeah, I'm not even a little bit surprised that I got your voicemail. Um, I don't know. I guess I'll just provide a few sentiments on my time in Seoul so far, since I've been here for about four months, which is crazy. Now, even though I am ridiculously eloquent, this is not scripted into three and a half pages. No, no, no. It's straight off the old, the old domer. In February of 2021, I quote-unquote moved to the city of Seoul, South Korea to finish out my very last semester of college and live out my stereotypical coming-of-age dreams. Filled with an indescribable sense of passion and excitement, I even wrote in my journal on the evening of December 31st, 2019, a new city, new people, new possibilities, it'll be my best. Yeah, that's really cute of me, right? Mm, Aw, Jess, you hopeful little idiot. The transition out of quarantine was a lot harder than I had anticipated. With my frustration and excitement to leave and enter civilization, I thought I'd leave ready to socialize and meet new people. Well, spoiler alert, (laughs) I got into the second worst oppressive episode of my life. (laughs) Uh, It's really not funny, but (laughs) I couldn't leave my bed. I couldn't clean my room, I couldn't even unpack. My anxiety really came out full force and I woke up feeling awful every morning. Stuck trapped, suffocated, you know, just, just girly things. But worst of all, the thought of leaving the house and stepping even 50 feet away to do something on my own petrified me. Even though going out on my own is something that I love to do, I now found it paralyzingly daunting. Now, I'm a double Aries, all right, sun and moon, which means at my very core, I am a fiercely independent person and will always perpetuate and encourage that onto everyone I come across, whether it's conscious or not. This also means that I'm usually always alone, but never lonely. However, this feeling wasn't like anything I'd ever come across. It wasn't my year-long phase of wearing all black and exclusively listening to 1975 in high school. It wasn't my second puberty during my second year of college where I was left with no friends and had to navigate loneliness for the very first time. This was something completely different. I mean, it was almost as if I had to shed this figurative layer of second skin in order to figure out why I was feeling the way I was feeling and really value my time abroad to its fullest capacity. It was almost as if I had to remaster the art of being alone. I know it sounds crazy, but solitude is something that can truly become addicting. Granted, it's a lot more internal effort. Being by yourself, you have to generate that mental energy all on your own. As opposed to being with friends, there's opportunity for it to be divided, reciprocated, also bounce back off each other. But when you're alone, you don't have to compromise on visiting a place you don't want to, or eating somewhere you don't want to, or staying somewhere for maybe three hours too long when you really just want to end the day and spend it on the couch watching a movie. I decided to rekindle that satisfaction I was once so familiar with and visit the secondhand bookstore in Seoul that had been on my list. Also rekindling my love for reading. Look at that, killing two birds with one stone. Cause that's just what I do. I'm sorry, I've been watching new, I'm, I've been watching way too much New Girl, I'm sorry. Anyway, I chose the literary classic 1984 by anti-fascist Bay George Orwell. It was either that or Monster High, The Goal Next Door. By the way, I'm really proud of myself for choosing like an actual adult book instead of a novel on like two tweens falling in love at summer camp. Genuinely really proud of myself for that one. Just wanted to put that out there. During my month-long depressive episode, I realized that my confidence and self-assurance were seemingly a facade. Dun dun dun! (laughs) I mean, I mean, I mean, fake it till you make it, right? But I noticed that being alone to me meant spending days upon days in my room, whether scrolling on my phone or doing homework, or visiting a nearly empty park and having lunch there by myself. Does feeling comfortable alone only when you're in an empty room or in a non-crowded place signify true contentment in being alone? I don't know. And if you do know, don't tell me. I also realized that my newfound fear of solitude, or I should say public solitude, was rooted in anxiety on being a foreigner in such a homogenous space. When I left my house, people wouldn't really gawk or do a double take, but there was still this looming presence of exclusivity. It's a feeling that's truly indescribable. And, I mean, I could get into taking up homogenous spaces as a black person, blah blah blah, bloop bloop bloop, bloop. but uh, I don't feel like introspecting right now. I mean, I kind of am, aren't I? Just know that my confidence at times was a mask, and I felt very short, 
yet extreme twinges of discomfort. I noticed that a lot of people don't make or seek out friends in order to build and maintain valuable relationships. They make friends to have someone who's there to agree with them or have a warm body around to accompany them to public places, you know, kind of like a placeholder. Visiting places completely alone is socially acceptable, but not that socially acceptable. I think as humans, we tell ourselves people will take one look at us and wonder whether or not the fact that we're there alone really is by choice and immediately write us off as like creepy or inherently unpleasant. Now, I visited a park by the Han River and I seemed super calm and collected, but was I really? No! Did I get very anxious and leave after a few hours? Yes, because I'm an adult and I can do whatever I want. Now, after I spent a month rotting in my bed and feeling sorry for myself, I did go out to meet people and with a small percentage of them, I thought to myself, mm, Bay, I literally never want to see you again. I made that song myself. Just now, off the top of my head, can you believe it? But you know when you hang out with someone for the first time and you're like, I didn't, I didn't love that. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. A very lukewarm feeling. What's the point of spending time with someone who you don't genuinely admire or learn a lot from? What's the point of spending time with someone if you're not counting down the days until you can see them again? Now, listen, this isn't as if I possess all of these qualities and my presence is some sort of prize or privilege I bestow upon people. I just think these things have a lot to do with compatibility. After spending several days completely on your own, you appreciate the presence of humans a lot more. Funny enough, being alone can make you a better friend, a better listener, a better advice giver. Rather on focusing what you're going to say next and how funny or insightful it is, you appreciate the moment for what it is and really take in what the person you're with has to say. Being alone is hard. Some days it's uncomfortable and confronting. Some days it's comfortable and serves as a security blanket for days you just really don't want to be perceived. But it's also necessary in order to facilitate growth and healing. During my most significant times alone, I learned that for one, I was riding the introvert wave far too hard. Like literally, I kind of wore it like a badge of honor and was so proud of the fact that I was someone who didn't need to be within the company of others all the time. But in the end, that left me to grow complacent and only having one friend and left me with terrible, <laughs> I mean terrible social skills. I learned that as much as I love being by myself, I also really value being surrounded by the company of others, especially people I care about or admire. I even also started analyzing a bit of my childhood trauma. Yeah, one night while bawling my eyes out to Mitski. <laughs> That was not a good night at all. I just immediately repressed everything I learned so virtually no progress was made anyway. <laughs> my point is that I just couldn't have realized those things if I didn't spend a few days with myself and only myself. In order to get out of my funk, or better yet, complete mental health crisis, I had to force myself, little by little solidifying my routine and making daily ventures out on my own whether they were errands, groceries, shopping, served as exposure therapy, but were small victories that reminded me, one, this is what I wanted. Two, stairs were just stairs. What's someone gonna do, fight me? Like literally, what are you gonna do? Like, are you gonna punch me? And three, <laughs> and three, that people really didn't care about me. And that is a thought that is a thousand times more comforting than it sounds. I still don't mind being alone. Most days, I actually prefer it. No, like actually, I lock four days a week for outside people time, um, and I need at least three to myself or I will spontaneously combust. As unsatisfying as it sounds, has my time abroad been stereotypical and coming of age like, mm, yes and no? I do have a few juicy stories that I'll be left for another time, but a lot of it has just been learning more about myself and the space around me. It's always gonna be work in progress. The what if, if you ask me one thing around about my 20s, it is that you just never stop anything. You never stop doing, you never stop learning. You think you have it figured out and then life will, I mean, completely assault you and you're left at square one. And it's great, it's great. Um, okay, anyways. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. Thank you for listening. I'm surprised this voicemail has gone 
this far, you know, because ha ha ha, this is this is a voicemail. This is you know, okay, let's let let let's cut the crap. This isn't a voicemail. It's you know what it is. It's like a it's like a you know what it, it's a voiceover anyway. Please, please, please let me know how you've been doing. I'm always curious to hear. I'm currently about to leave to plant myself in a cafe for the next 12 hours to work on a finals presentation. And that is so, so, so fun. I really have to go now. Okay, love you. Bye.